Hello all, welcome to Tech Vices. In this video, we will talk about publisher subscriber model. So this model is really a great pattern whenever we want to uh, talk to our clients with a asynchronous mode. So agenda for this video will be to understand uh, first difference between asynchronous and synchronous communication. Then understand what is the this uh, pub sub model, uh, how it works, and what are various components of it. Then we'll focus on the benefits and drawbacks of that. Before we deep dive into the publisher subscriber model, which is also called as a pub sub model, let us understand the difference between synchronous and asynchronous transactions. So here uh, in this diagram, uh, you can see there are two uh, systems. One is uh, having the point to point connections between the components or microservices in left hand side. For example, you have a microservice A1 calling A2 and A3, right? And A2 is calling A4 and A5. So for any request coming to A1, A1 is going to call A3 and A2 to get some response back. And in turn, uh, to fulfill that, A2 needs to call to A4 and A5. So the whole communication is happening either via REST communication or maybe SOAP, uh, SOAP calls. But the point here is that the, 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 the response is instantaneous. So whatever the processing we are doing, suppose A1 has called A3. So now A1 is waiting for A3 to respond. So whenever uh, all the responses are sent back to the A1, it's going to respond back to the client. So whenever response is sought just after the request, and we want to uh, respond quickly, at that time, I mean, this type of uh, communication or transactions called as a uh, synchronous transactions. But if you see in the right-hand side diagram, system is same. But now here, the communication is happening via message queues. So there is no direct communication between uh, the uh, microservices like A1, A2, A3, A4, A5. They are kind of decoupled. So uh, so suppose uh, A1 want to uh, connect to the A2. So it will not uh, send a direct call to A2, but it will push a message in a message queue. And from message queue, A2 will pick it up and do processing. Right? So this is how uh, basically a single transition uh, works. And uh, because of that, there's a high degree of uh, decoupling and high degree of scalability as well. Because uh, suppose you want to, suppose I want to add a fix uh, microservices, uh, which want to process the messages in the queue to queue, right? So you can easily add that and do the processing because all systems are decoupled, but here, uh, the main difference uh, between uh, synchronous and this one is that the response is not sent back immediately. Now, even if not concerned whether A2 has picked up or not that message. So even is just pushing its messages uh, to Q1 and Q2. And now it's the responsibility of A2 and A3 to pick up the message and process it. So whenever uh, you can afford delays, for example, uh, if you want to send the monthly statements to the customer, suppose for the credit card or bank account, at that time, uh, no customer is waiting for that email, right? So you can utilize uh, this type of asynchronous communication in that system because at that time, if there is some delay also, uh, so it will be uh, tolerable. But whenever uh, we are dealing uh, when customer or client uh, need response right away at that time, we have to use the synchronous transactions or synchronous communication. So this is a major difference between uh, between uh, these two uh, systems or these two way of uh, communication. So based on this asynchronous communication, uh, we have this uh, pub uh, public subscribe model as well. So here, what happens is that you have like uh, three components, which are like main component of this whole uh, model or architecture pattern here we have publishers publishers are those systems or applications 
that are going to post messages, right? But they are not concerned that who is going to consume them. So whatever messages or requests or maybe whatever the output they want to send as a messages, it will be sending it to the channel or topics. They are basically a kind of message queues only and they are called as channel or topics. So whatever, uh, whatever message is uh, there, it's going to be pushed by publishers into a topic. Now, suppose you have many subscribers which are interested. Uh, for example, Twitter, right? So in Twitter, what happens that whenever one uh, person tweets, right? So he doesn't know that whether it is going to read by somebody or who is going to read it. He don't know. He's not concerned about it. So, uh, so it will be by those uh, subscribers who want, who are basically. Uh, they want to listen or they read that to it, right? So that is happening exactly here. So whenever a publisher is pushing a message into a uh, topic, subscribers are already uh, waiting for a message and they can read it from that topic. So now the, the coupling between the publisher and subscriber is very, very loosely coupled because both are not talking to each other directly, but they are linked via a channel or message queue. So this is how uh, we can say that asynchronous communication is happening. And whenever a publisher is publishing a message, now it is up to subscriber. So whenever it has some capacity, it can go to uh, the topic and read the message and do the processing. So the, the whole idea here is that the publisher and subscriber are decoupled and even it is like very highly scalable also. So for example, you want to add a few more publishers or you want to add a few more subscribers, right? So you can definitely add them at your will. So uh, this system is highly scalable. Also, it is highly decoupled. So this is the main property of this uh, PubSub model. And that's why whenever uh, you have system to be built, uh, where we can afford delays in processing or uh, nobody's waiting uh, for response, right? At that, uh, uh, for those applications, uh, we can use the PubSub model. So now let us understand uh, some benefits of uh, the PubSub model. So first benefit, as I already explained in my previous slide, that loose coupling is there. So uh, whatever the scalability, suppose you want to add uh, uh, publishers or you want to add more subscribers, you can do at your own will because there is no uh, direct communication between uh, these two uh, components. So they are like loosely coupled. Even if you want to add some more channels or topic, it is uh, not a problem. You can add them. So uh, by this model, we can we we achieve a high degree of loose coupling. Second thing is like highly scalable. You can add more and more publishers and subscribers because there is no dependency between them. So it is very easy uh, to scale your application at a desired limit. Also, uh, suppose uh, you have publisher uh, application, one application in Java, another is in .NET. Similarly, suppose uh, your subscribers may be uh, written uh, maybe in one uh, like COBOL language, maybe others like suppose MuleSoft. So uh, this whole system is uh, whatever like I can say is a language agnostic. So because uh, you can build your subscribers and publishers applications in different languages. Okay, so you are not like uh, tied up with one language. Okay, if my system uh, is uh, like is in Java, so I have to write all, all the uh, all the apps in Java only. So uh, this is also very great, a great uh, kind of attribute of uh, this model that uh, you can use any protocol, any language, and you are not depending upon any one language. So also like uh, with this uh, attribute, right? Uh, suppose legacy applications are there, and you want to add a few more applications uh, to uh, read or listen from the topic. You can create uh, them in a model uh, languages so that uh, you are able to modernize your application as well at same time. And yeah, so this uh, whole whole process is basically asynchronous and event driven communication is happening here. So for every event, they say there are subscribers who are interested in that 
and they can uh, basically process that uh, event and do their uh, required uh, job. So now, uh, suppose if you have understood the uh, what is the what is the benefit of uh, uh, pop sub model, or uh, so we can also understand like uh, what are the way we should use it because. Uh, main thing is that whenever you know some some uh, some concept or some uh, some pattern, you should know like where it is appropriate to use. So, for example, uh, you want to suppose send some event notifications. For example, uh, suppose uh, you are a very large insurance provider, right? And for every claim, you are doing some notification to the customers or maybe internal uh, teams, right? So at that time. Uh, suppose you can uh, you want want to basically uh, send even notification. You can utilize this uh, pop sub model, and also whenever you want to broadcast messages, uh, for example, uh, in production, if you want to broadcast, okay, if there is some issues come having with some application. So when you know okay issue has arrived, so you can broadcast it to all concerned subscribers. So it is very uh, easy to talk to them in one shot. So and also, uh, if you want to build some like apps like which are like very responsive and low latency, for example, chat or multiplayer collaboration functionality that can be also used uh, using this uh, pattern. And ways not use this pattern like sometimes we have very simple system. Suppose you have just one application producing some messages and one application reading those messages, right? So at that time, there is no need to use this model. At that time, you can use simple REST-based or SOAP-based application, right? Because uh, whatever whatever the complexity we will be adding by adopting this pattern is going to be like overkill. So suppose unnecessary why you want to uh, complicate your application. So always remember one thing that keep it simple. Okay, if you don't need it, then you don't need. You do not need to unnecessarily complicate things. So uh, also, suppose you want to do some kind of a, like uh, media streaming, but it's not good because uh, media streaming needs basically synchronous communication. So we should not uh, use uh, this model whenever we are trying to do the media streaming. And also, if uh, there are some uh, events like some applications which are non-event driven or like uh, synchronous in nature, then at that uh, for those use cases. This model not suitable. So yeah. So basically, uh, for any scenarios, we have to understand it holistically that whether this pattern is suitable or not. Then only we should adopt it, right? So I think uh, with this, uh, thank you very much uh, for watching. Uh, see you next time. Uh, please leave comments or questions if you have any, and please subscribe to my channel as well. Thanks a lot.